um, unfortunately, they don't drape really well on Western wear. Mm. Uh, they drape really well as saris, as dupattas. Um, and it's quite interesting because there's this young uh, designer, uh, Dipanjali and Reena, uh, who are from the Northeast. And it's really funny that they started thinking about designing a ready-to-wear line for, you know, with a curated collection for Rock and Shop. And their inspiration was the hand loom, which is a particular weave called Ti, Rani Ti. Yeah. And, um, you know, and then we just said, hang on, stop. Don't do that. Why don't you just do the dupattas? Because um, it can be worn as a scarf. And if somebody wants to buy a dupatta, they totally can. And what's interesting is about this, uh, this particular weave is that for each dupatta or scarf that, they wanna, that, that is made, that design never gets repeated. The colors never get repeated. And it's made by women in their homes. Um, and you know, she take, it takes about you know, three weeks for her to weave one dupatta. And um, you know, what we've done with them is that we've said, let's remove the middleman straight from these women who are weaving. It's coming onto the Rock and Shop website. And it's open to everyone to buy. And you know, what's interesting is that it's, it's just stunning. It's spectacular. Like I, during the day, I wear Western wear because I'm most comfortable in Western wear. But in the evenings, I love wearing Indian clothes. During festivals, I love wearing Indian clothes. And I think our heritage is something that we should encourage especially in the business of fashion, as long as, again, keeping in mind the fact that it's commercial. There are many women who do buy uh, you know, these particular hand looms. Um, they are, it's a dying breed, uh, you know, purely because the mass consumption is looking at power looms. Yes. Um, and here we are, you know, a few of us in this particular industry saying, no, let's look at limited collections, let look, let's look at better price points. Please don't ask for discounts when you come <laughs> to Rock and Shop or any of any of the designers, because a lot of hard work goes into making that product. Um, there's also a perception that um, you know, oh, luxury brand, the margins are super high. It's not true, uh, and I can say this with a lot of confidence, because there are a lot of operating costs involved in giving you that luxury experience. Uh, if you are to buy a product from Malini store uh, in Goa, as an example, she's paying rent, she's hired staff. There's a whole experience. If she's got a number of brands, like she said, international brands, there's duty that is paid to our lovely government. And then there are taxes involved as well. So you know, please encourage the business as opposed to discouraging it. And that's essentially what is also a, a huge task that we're finding um, as a hurdle, is that people need to understand that there's a lot that goes into building and, and, and producing mm -hmm. these, these beautiful merchandise. Um, and even though as Indians generally we feel it's our right to ask for a discount, prices, I will still ask for my discount at Audi. <laughs> <laughs> it's not fashion. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, essentially we should uh, you know, encourage the business. And I, I think these, these old weaves and old uh, textiles are something that, again, we should encourage and not look for better prices. And with the Indian brands that you curate on your yes. website, do you get them to do a customized uh, design for your website or yes. is it something that you get from what they have and sell that well we work on an exclusivity so what you will see on our website you will not get anywhere um and that's something because we want to make sure that the collections are so we 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 work very closely with our brands hmm. and we tell them about who our, who our audience is um we've done a lot of research in terms of who our customer is for example we've introduced emi uh, on rock and shop so today you can buy a celine bag on emi um, and the bag's yours immediately, and you can choose to pay within three, six, or 12 months. Um, so when we're curating the collections, we also know who the customer is. Is she going to buy it? So commerciality is a really important aspect of what we're trying to do. So um, we also demand exclusivity on that, because essentially we want customers only to come to us, and we don't want to get into price battles with other onlines who are essentially in that business of discount. Malni, what is your view? Do you feel with all this heritage revivalist movement, has that been an updation of Indian fashion in the mainstream? Yeah, I mean, I'm so glad that, again, what Charu said, everybody wearing these beautiful saris. And I hope saris never go out of fashion. Um, you know, I myself now have adapted. And one of the things that I do a lot of is I do zip up saris. Uh, one zip and it's done. And so that's, you know, <laughs> it's easy to travel with. It never needs ironing. You can wear it anywhere in the world. And I'm, I love them. 
Um, and now I'm, it, after that, it's very difficult to wear the, the ones the, that you have to drape yourself. Um, and I've always, if there was no India, I could not be in this business because all my designs are based on India. I do tie-dye, bandhani, leheria, mirror work. I, I wouldn't be able to be, you know, it's, it's, it's the most beautiful way to embrace your culture. And um, I'm getting more and more Indian. So I hope I don't start looking like a sadhu very soon. <laughs> going in that direction. <laughs> Uh, another question to the panel is, do you think that the business of fashion in India is moving in the manner it's meant to be? Uh, anyone can go first. Yeah, I, I definitely think it is. I mean, like you've seen, there's been such a huge growth in India, whether you look at even brands like Zara or H&M or you have Sephora, you have all these high street brands that are coming in here. Um, fashion is becoming so international. Uh, you have a store like Charu's, like Rock and Shop or Kitchen. That for that to be a luxury brand like that to be doing well in India, so I think it's growing quite fast and rapidly. And like they gave the figures themselves before we started, so I definitely think it's going in the right direction. And I think Indian designers are also growing. And perhaps I think where Indian fashion is concerned, I think Indian designers just need to, like Indian designers run their own business. So I think here what we need is we need investors to come, outside yeah. investors to come in so that we can focus on designing and people are looking at your figures and your numbers and your projections. So yeah, that's something that we need to look at. Yeah, I think I totally agree with uh, Gauri. Important point is there need to be investors in the West. You have investors. To the credit of all these designers and everyone on this panel pretty much, you know, it's been hard work, your own money, borrowed money, whatever it is. When times are tough, you know, you just pull through. But it's time that there were investors. And I think it's time the government uh, gave more support instead of always penalizing the designers because they think it's luxury and, oh, they're rich and, oh, these people, you know. Somewhere down the line, I, 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 they really, really need to support the designers. And the whole industry, whether it's a place for fashion weeks or spaces given to them, I mean, it's ridiculous the kind of rents that are being charged today by all the malls that uh, the designers go to. And, you know, that translates into higher costs for all of us. And uh, I, I think the government needs to step in big time. Charu and Malini, your views, you, your views on the business of fashion in India? Is it moving in the manner it's meant to be? Yes and no. Um, for me, again, as I, what I experience is everything is bridal, bridal, bridal. <laughs> you know, <laughs> um, and it's, I'm surrounded by it, and that's where everybody spends their money. People start saving for their daughter's wedding from the day they're born. They don't care how much they spend. It doesn't make any sense. They'll just drop, you know, tens of lakhs on a, one lenga, and then, but they won't want to buy, you know, my zi lovely zip-up sari yeah. for <laughs> 20,000. Um, so, yeah, you know, um, yes and no. And um, there's a lot of, uh, we have so many other options with the Zara's, H&M, and all of that. Um, with really good pricing. Um, yeah, there are also a lot of copycats around, which, so there are many different ways where this is, like in any industry in the world, but I'm having fun, so, so far so good. But how do you curtail, but how do you curtail plagiarism in, in an industry like you yours? Besides making noise, you can't, you can't, you can't do you anything can't. about you it. You just yeah. thank God that to give you ne the next good idea. <laughs> Keep getting ideas. The copycats can't last. And you have to look at it as a compliment. Yeah. But it's annoying. Yeah. You know? And especially when they're charging, like, I, I actually, I would say it's more annoying for the big designers, like the Sabia Sachis, where you can get their, their knockoffs for nothing. And, you know? But in a way, you have to look at it in a positive way. So that the people who really look at and admire things can actually afford to buy it and look good at their wedding. Yeah. Charu, I wanted to ask you a quick question. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, very quickly, um, you know, I was just sort of thinking in terms of has it has India really moved in the right direction in terms of the fashion? And I have worked with international brands and some of the most well-established <coughs> brands in fashion, and I've seen how they operate, their business models, their their delivery timelines. Um, you know, in terms of size, I think today a lot of the young designers, uh, because you know they're looking at not just the Indian market but the global market, and I think that's what's really important to look at that. You're not just catering to an Indian market where it's, you know, the quality is poor or the design elements are, again, are, there, there's some designers who just are exactly copying what other designers are doing. Um, and at the same time, their size sets don't make sense. So their small is never the same size okay. consistently. I think that's changing. You know, basic people are going back to the drawing board and they're looking at, you know, their pattern making, uh, the delivery cycles, because at the end of the day, 
um, delivery on time for a retailer is really important. If your deliveries come late, you miss a season. Uh, and the shelf life of fashion is literally 180 days. And customers are very intelligent, and especially with all the social media. They know when something is, you know, how old it is. Um, so it's really something that I feel that we're still at a very nascent stage. It's happening. Uh, Indian brands are becoming more and more aware that they need to improve their business operations. Um, and again, I think it, it happens if you delineate the designer, the marketing team, and the production and delivery teams. Um, licensing, as an example, is something that hasn't started in India. And it's an opportunity which a lot of Indian brands have not tapped into. Very few have, and they've not really been very successful. Um, so keeping all this in mind, I think we're still at an early stage, but I see it moving. I see that the momentum has started. And taking off from what you said, how do you translate, given the fact that fashion cycle is 180 days, how do you, one, quickly generate awareness and then translate that awareness into sales? How, what are the brand building activities that well, I, in today's day and age, uh, with our mobile phones, social media is a huge uh, component. I think advertising, personally, I think advertising in, in print publications is uh, really a waste and burn of dollars right now, I believe. Um, television is a huge uh, space, and so that's why stylists like Gotham come into play when they, when they put product on a celebrity who's a huge influencer, and that creates awareness instantly. Um, so there are different channels. And then, of course, there's direct marketing. So we're doing emailers. Um, we, in fact, our customer care spends a lot of time in contacting and, and, and communicating with our top clients, informing them, keeping them in the loop in terms of what's come in, um, you know, if they need any styling tips. So in fact, the concept of personal shopping and personal styling is also something that doesn't exist right now in India, because I, perhaps most men and women feel that it could be insulting. But actually, if you have someone who does that for you, it saves you the hassle every morning to think about, oh, what am I going to wear today? You know, Imagine the amount of time you'll have saved if Gotham comes and says, <laughs> Monday you're wearing this, Tuesday you're then wearing this, Gotham. and Wednesday you're wearing this. You know? So it's, an, it's another I wish I, I, I need a stylist too, because sometimes like, I don't care what I wear. But no, I, I think what she's saying is really right. You know. Um, it's about balancing the way you look, and it helps. I mean, like I said earlier, look at some of the Bollywood actresses. They used to dress really tacky, and now they're looking pretty good, and they're making the clothes look good. So it, it works. Yeah, and the Instagram likes are selling the product. Well, yeah. The day. Yeah. Yeah. So there you go. They are, um, they are. And just to conclude, I wanted to check, uh, start from there, from Gauri. Uh, any advice uh, for, it's not just the love of clothes that helps you become successful. It's a lot of machinery in place. Uh, labor people, can you give us some tips on, um, you know, how do you get to where you are? Well, of course, you know, there's so much that goes into it, so I could not, like, just give advice <laughs> like that. But I think if anyone wants to start a brand, a fashion brand, uh, the most important thing is, I think, how you have to see how you want, like, where you want to position that brand, how do you perceive that brand, and what it is that you're offering that's unique and different. Um, of course, then after that, you have to start. I think you should not put like start too big and you know you just and kind of you know do too many things. Focus on what you want to do and try and grow um, organically, perhaps you know, and then <clears> see <throat> how the brand works. I think and look at your quality, look at your numbers, look at your the business. So you know, and then just start. I think. Yeah, I remember Gori and I started uh, in a garage, like most startups. And we used an old uh, table tennis table for a pattern making table. My mother's a sewing machine and uh, just one mannequin and that's it, you know, we just with one tailor and that tailor's still with us today. So yeah, and I think we just kind of grew organically. Our product got noticed and we started selling to more stores. You know, you kind of figure out what you want to do, what people are liking. I think what Nenika and Gauri, I should say Gauri and Nenika, um, <laughs> are, are trying to sort of uh, articulate is that it's very important when you're starting a brand to know who is your consumer and is she an Audrey Hepburn in her own personal style um, you know or is she someone who likes to travel and hence you know is she gonna come and buy a Gauri Nanika or is she someone who's gonna come and buy Malini Romani so you have to identify who your customer is and what's also really important is to have a value system in place who are you 
what do you represent as a brand? And because people are not just buying your clothes, they're buying into the whole um, It's really important to understand that when someone spends, you can go and buy a white t-shirt from Zara, but if Malini has a white t-shirt, there's a story behind it. It's a value that she's trying to provide to you. What is that story? And it's really important also for the customer to know, why should I spend 10,000 rupees on a white t-shirt when I can get it for 300 rupees at, I don't know, some high street label? So I think it's really important to understand that when you're establishing a brand, what is your story, who is your customer, and what is your value? It's really important to communicate that as well. I Ma think, uh, just like to add to what Charu is saying, which is true, I think since both of us are not designers on this panel, yeah. so we can speak about things more objectively. <laughs> uh, but I think what's interesting is that all the, like both Gauri Nenika and Malni are, as a stylist, I've worked with literally every designer in the country, whether from Delhi or not, over the years, more or less, young, senior, blah, blah, blah. And I think these are two in incredible examples of brands that have sustained themselves. I've known Malni for years. I, when I had a store called Grasshopper in Bangalore many years ago, where I was very, it was kind of very Japanese-y, blah, blah, blah. It, you know, it had a very unique point of view. And Mali Romani's clothes did not fit into it. I loved her clothes. And I remember we, that's when we met.